Today we're going to look at the Lewis dot structure for CO2, carbon dioxide. It's a covalent compound made from nonmetals bonded together by sharing electrons. The first step to putting this structure together is to draw each element individually, out of carbon, an oxygen, and an oxygen. That's the CO2 part. And then I'm going to use the periodic table to figure out how many valence electrons I have for each. Carbon is in group 4, which means it will have 4 valence electrons. Each oxygen has 6 valence electrons because they're in group 6. I'm going to use red for this just so we can see them apart later on. We'll have two pairs and two singles. It doesn't really matter which side we put the pairs on and which side we put the singles on. As long as we remember that the electrons will be in four separate places before they pair up. Now I'd like to connect these together. Remember a covalent bond is a shared pair of electrons. Carbon has the most places for sharing to occur, so it's going to be our central atom in this structure. I'm going to draw carbon here. Put one, two, three, four electrons around it. And then I'm going to put one of the oxygens right here. And I'm going to copy its electrons as well. And you'll notice I have a pair of electrons right here that could be shared. And I have a pair right here that could be shared. And once that happens, oxygen has eight electrons some of the time, and carbon now has six electrons some of the time instead of just four. So I'm going to take my other oxygen and I'll slap it over here. And I'm going to draw its electrons. I'm going to put them where they're facing a little more closely to that carbon. So I can share this pair between the two and this pair between the two. And what I've created between each oxygen and the carbon is a double bond, two pairs being shared. I can neaten up this structure quite a bit. All I have to do is draw my carbon, and instead of a pair of dots, I'm going to use a single line. Another pair of dots being shared, there's a single line, and here's my oxygen. This pair of electrons right here is still hanging out on my oxygen still has two pairs, as a matter of fact. Same thing's true with the other side. A double bond to the oxygen and two pair of electrons left behind. And that's one way to model carbon dioxide. One carbon connected to two oxygens so that each atom has access once in a while to eight electrons, making them more stable. I can also show this with some handy little model kits. I have a little sphere to represent carbon. you notice it has four little holes there for bonds to connect into, just like our initial carbon had four individual bonding sites. I have some oxygens. Each oxygen has two little bonding sites available to it. So I can show a carbon double bonded to oxygen with these little flexible sticks. Here's a carbon connected to an oxygen once, and then connected to an oxygen twice. And that is a carbon double bonded to one oxygen. I can connect again, double bond to another red one. The red's representing oxygen today again, and the black representing carbon. I click them together. And I get out of this a carbon dioxide molecule. One carbon, double bonded to an oxygen, double bonded to another oxygen. With this nifty little structure, a very linear structure, because they're all in one line. That's carbon dioxide.